Hello everyone and welcome to my coloring corner. Today is um, First Impressions Friday, sorry, um, and I got Happy Mail. These are gifts from subscribers that I received in the mail today. Well, not today, but this week. And thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, thank you very, very much. And one of them is a Christmas present that uh, was taking longer to ship than expected, which is fine. Uh, this one here, it, I don't know who it's from. Uh, somebody sent it to me and there was no card with it. So no information uh, whatsoever was it was sent to me. This is Europa from Rita Berman. And thank you so very much. It is the most adorable book uh, ever. So I have three of her books now. It's awesome. So I'm going to go to do a very quick flip through and we'll get to the other page uh, so that so we have uh, the main page here and our little title page and this is adorable little turtle. Um, I just I just love it. It's so cute. I don't know what that says at all, but it's from Rita Berman. And here we have a cute little map. And of course, there's two different sides of the of the pages. So each page has, a, you know, both sides covered. So you have to be careful what you use on it. And I love these little circles. They're just wonderful. Um, I don't know where it starts, but there's all sorts of little mappy area here. And of course, the start of the bus and the start of the route. It's so cute. Okay. Now, just so you know, this is a voiceover. So this has been pre-recorded and I've had to redo the voice on it because of the fact that my microphone decided, yeah, it didn't like me anymore. So, <laughs> and then we have a library page and a little Vespa and this one here has a little little yacht on it. It's really cute. And of course the suitcase and the traveling with the all the stuff. <laughs> and just so many really cute, really cute pages. Like this one here that has all the different candies and whatnot. Wonderful artist page with the kitty kitty. It's just absolutely adorable. And look at that one. That one's so cute. Oh, another page with little little tiny areas. So the great thing about these little areas is you can start a little spot and just color one little area and feel accomplished for the day. So I really enjoy those. And it's just so cute. And this isn't the one that she came out with for her free page. It's in here somewhere and we'll probably get to it later on. And a beach page, underwater page, just so cute. And then we have a tree house and of course the train. <laughs> this one here, the, the trail, the rail car is up on the roof. It's kind of funky. Yeah, see, up, up on the roof. I love the little clock though. The whole thing's so cute. Oh, and a baking page. Gotta have a baking page. Love baking pages. All sorts of cookies. And a really nice little mandala. It's not overbearing. It's really cute and it's very small. So quite simple to do and very quick. Then we have another little page full of little tiny pictures, which is great for testing pencils. It's also great for, you know, making you feel like you've had something done uh, during the day. So, and of course, some postage with some pretty flowers. And of course, the flowers continue on to the other page there. There we go with a ladybug and then some more pretty flowers. And a wonderful picnic scene with a cute little radio. And oh, we missed a page. 
There we are. Oh my goodness. Look at the the little love bird cats in the window. That's so cute. And then we have our little bird in the fountain with some bubbles and some balloons. Wonderful little house there. Looks like a little town with the, the uh, archway pathways. They're so cute. And of course more cakes and tea cakes and all sorts of goodies. And the kitty cat out of outside the pastry shop. And some little purses and beauty supplies and then the little purse shop. And these this is the page that uh, Rita Berman put out uh, re, uh, for free a little while ago. And I just love this. It's like little dandelion poofs with some pictures in it. It's so cute. And then we have the carnival, a uh, different carnival scene and wonderful little swans in the canal. And there's another wonderful mandala type page. And then we have, of course, the little chocolate here and the chocolates. And each chocolate can be colored on a different day. Oh, what a nice ship. Definitely a good ship there. A wonderful little city scene and some um, Dutch wooden shoes there. Amsterdam. And then we have our little bicycle. And then we have another really nice little mandala. It's not overbearing. I don't mind the ones that aren't overbearing in constant repetition. Um, that are overly zentangled. And this is this is nice and simple. It's not overly zentangled. Um, really pretty little flower. And then of course hot air balloons. Love hot air balloons. Lots of pretty hot air balloons flying over the city. And then we have London. And of course it's raining. So lots of umbrellas. And the London boardwalk. And the the different postage. This is a nice one for Valentine's Day with the little lovebirds sending off all the letters. And some postcards. <clears throat> and a lovely little window scene with a tea cart. And the puppy dog getting the mail. <laughs> it's so cute. I just love it. I love the flowers in, in her pictures. They're so so nice and so easy to make detailed but still make simple. It's really nice. And then we have a gondola and we have another London page here with the different radios, the tea, all the fun stuff. And some more air balloons. Lots of pretty air balloons. And this one's really funky. It's got different flags and here we have some camping and postage, as well as a wonderful little camping cabin. And this one here we have some an owl and some beavers and a wonderful little rabbit. And we have a moose and a bird and a little deer. Lots of really, really cute, <coughs> really cute uh, pages. We have some strawberries and different berries, some strawberries and blackberries and some acorns. And of course, over on this side, we have some blueberries and some flowers and of course, ladybugs. And this one, it has all different little scenes and I love the fact that they made the little house out of pencils. It's so cute. And then we have a little castle type scene. And then again, another bunch of little pictures so that you can you can just pick different uh, different scenes and, and just color different different things like watercolor and different things like that. Just so cool. Like we can take this the boats and do them in watercolor or color them for watercolor week and stuff like that, which is really cool. The um, the paper in this book is really, really nice as well. So it uh, does 
does give the option of using a watercolor uh, in it very, very gently. You, you don't want to do too, too much, otherwise it'll bleed through the page or make the other side of the page useless. So, And then, of course, we have our test pages where we have all different ways of testing different things, whether it's paint, crayons, pens, um, pencil crowns, pencils, that sort of thing. And then we have another scratch page here. And then, of course, these are the books that she has put out. And I do believe I have a few of them. I have uh, this one. Which one? That one. I know I have that one. And I know somebody is sending me this one. But there's another one I have. And I can't remember which one it is. And a lovely little house scene there. And that's the end of the book. So that was Europa by Rita Berman. And again, thank you so much for sending me this book. It's just the cutest thing ever. Now on to the swatching and the fun things. Um, this little box came and um, I thought I had ordered it because I knew, knew I put it on my wish list. However, it was sent to me by a subscriber and she's one of my biggest supporters. So uh, she sent me a bunch of Faber-Castell different things uh, for Christmas. And this one was held up in shipping because it came all the way from the Faber-Castell site. So it actually came from Germany from Faber-Castell, which is just so cool. And they're the cutest pencils ever. They have little tiny gemstones on them and they sparkle. They just, they glitter. It's just so cool. It's one of those little sets that's a feel good set. Um, it doesn't have any names or numbers on it, just uh, the Faber Castell brand and that they were made in Germany. But they do have the cutest little diamonds on them and it's just adorable. They are a triangular pencil. And I just love the sparkle of them. <laughs> They're so cool. Just wonderful, wonderful pencils. All right, so let's see here. I know I'm saying something about the pencils, but I have no idea what. <laughs> like I said, this is a voiceover. So uh, there is a, two stacks of 10 different pencils. So we've got our basic colors down here and we've got this wonderful little sharpener that comes in the set and it's really kind of cool because it just slips out like that. You sharpen your pencil, all of the shavings go inside the pencil uh, holder there and you just snap it closed and you don't have to worry about it. Um, you just pop out the... <laughs> I'm, I'm fixated with the, the snapping of it closed. <laughs> Yeah, you can flip out or pop out the top part there, uh, here, like that, and uh, empty it out. And of course, there is a little screw that holds in the uh, blade, so of course you can switch that blade out. Just a really cute little pencil sharpener. And of course, we will test that at some point during the video. And I can't figure out how to put it back in. There we go. <laughs> So I do have a swatch chart that we are going to fill out with these wonderful, wonderful pencils. And of course we will be doing our testing and that sort of thing. It did come with this little pamphlet that tells you all the different things available uh, in the children's line of the Faber-Castell. This one here is a color grip. Uh, then there's the jumbo grip, which is a larger pencil. The um, the grip part is just little bumps that keeps you from, from dropping it. This one is different paints that snap together. And of course, a paintbrush washing uh, set as well. And then we've got our glitters uh, and a, a different set of glitters up here. And then we've got the specialties. This one here is like a little um, little lug piece of luggage that travels around a little little bus there as well. And then of course we have our black edition and over here we have some pens. Um, these, the, these pens have that glitter on them and these ones here are for uh, calligraphy and that sort of thing. 
So they have all sorts of things that are available um, in the in the different lines for the Faber-Castell stuff. So I do have a swatch chart here, and of course it doesn't have any white, and these don't have any numbers on them. So we're just going to swatch from start to finish and um, that sort of thing. This is a bit of a peachy pink color. Uh, it's, it's nice and light. It's a really good little uh, bit of flesh tone for a light flesh. And I should switch it over to the close-up camera for you here so that you can see a little bit better. I'm just going to move these out of the way and then I'll switch it on over to that close-up camera for you. There we go. Maybe even turn on a light. Yeah. Now the light, um, it helps me a lot, but sometimes it just reflects poorly on the pencil, so I may turn it off later. <laughs> but as you can see, it's a fairly nice pink tone, and it uh, just lays down like butter. You know, a couple of light layers, and you've got a full coverage. And if you're a heavy-handed person, you can definitely push down on these pencils, and it's not going to break. I didn't snap any. Uh, tips at all, which is awesome. But it's a very lovely peachy tone to this one. Very light peak, pinky peach. Now this next one is a little bit more of a purple pink. Again, it's got the lovely sparkle on it. And we're just going to put down a thin layer up at the top here doing uh, half and half. And of course these swatch squares are a little bit bigger. So you get to see a lot more of the color than with the smaller uh, swatches um, in the larger sets. So it's got a, a really pretty color. It's a little bit more purple in um on the chart itself than it is on the video. It does seem to be a little washed out in the video. So it is a fairly nice dark pink uh, purple color. So it's got that purple tone underneath. Almost a light red violet kind of color. And then the next one is, yes, yeah needed to turn that light off so you can actually get a good good view of the color. And it's a, a really pretty color. This one is a red violet and it's a darker color so it will uh, combine quite nicely with the one next to it. And I, I do apologize once again for the uh, voiceover. If you watched the previous video, you would have noticed that there was some stuttering going on in the uh, in the sound. So I have the new headset, and hopefully it works out much better for me. So this uh, red violet is a very nice deep color. It's not um, overbearingly deep, like it's not really really dark but it does uh, give a really good red-violet hue or tone or color, whatever you want to call it, and uh, will combine quite nicely with the one, uh, the previous color, so. A really pretty, pretty color. Now the next color is going to be a violet, and it is a really nice blue-violet uh, purple, so it's definitely polishes off that color between the colors uh, previously. If you took the light red violet and the red violet in this one, it would make a really good combination. Coats very very nicely. And of course, a couple of layers and you have your full full range of color there. Now, the reason why I do um, a hard and a light instead of doing hard all the way down is because it gives me the ability to see the range between um, 
the most color you can get on the page to the least amount of color that you can get on the page so that you can build that color in between. So if you want a uh, mid range, then you know that you've got to put a few more layers on than two or three. And if you want something extremely dark, you can either put a heavy hand to your pencil or you can layer to that extent, which is definitely a good thing to be able to visually see as soon as you pick up a pencil. So that's why I do the, uh, the different levels. A very nice blue violet color. The next one is a hot pink and it's just exactly what it is. It's a nice bright dark pink. I was a little concerned at this point because I didn't see any reds in the in the top part of the tin but we will get to that in just a few moments here. I was going to skip the silver and gold at the end of this tin part of the tin, but uh, after seeing what was in the lower tin, because I, with doing the flip through, completely forgot what was in the lower tin, um, I decided that it was best to do the way that they're set up. The top area here is most of your pinks, your, your peaches, your purples, and your lighter tones, um, lighter shades. So, this is a really nice dark uh, hot pink and the next pink is more of a bubblegum pink so it's a really light medium tone and together with the first uh, peachy pink, the bubblegum pink and the dark pink would make a very very nice combination as well. That one there is and yeah those three there the the medium light and blue violets there will also make a really good combination as well. You can pretty much match anything to anything as long as you have more of one thing than the other. So as long as you're not putting complete opposites, you know, as long as you're not going to be matching green and, and um, what is the opposite of green? green and brown, well, that, that kind of goes together. Pretty much everything goes together. So this one is a nice sky blue, a really light, nice, pretty light blue. It will work really well for those um, high sun skies where they're nice and light summer type skies. And like I said, the color on these is laying down beautifully. I haven't sharpened them at all. So this is straight out of the box that you're getting this color level of them, which for a children's grade product is really, really good. And as you can see, it's a really, really pretty light blue. And then we have a medium blue. This is more of a um, spring sky blue so you've got a little bit of a darker almost a periwinkle blue kind of color. It works really really well. It doesn't have as much purple in it as periwinkle but it does have that slight undertone of that of that purple blue. And it does work really, really well for your shadow areas and your your darker areas of, of your skies and that sort of thing. All right. And it just lays down so pretty. A couple of layers with a heavy hand. I'm not even pushing as hard as I should be in order to get that heavy hand look. And they do match up really, really well to the barrel. So you're not, even though there are no numbers and that sort of thing, you're, you're not at a loss of what color is where. This one is a really pretty mint type of green, um, you know, a baby mint green. And it, uh, it's just such a nice soft color. It's very, very pretty. One of my, one of my favorite colors is that nice soft mint green. 
I can never find enough places to put it, mind you, but <laughs> it's a wonderful green and it works really well for those aquatic colors, which is lovely because there I can find lots of places to put it. I like to do water in, in that light green tone with a blue undertone, so very pretty color. And again, the lay down is nice and smooth. There's no scratchiness or anything to these pencils. And I haven't found any that ha are broken or breaking or anything like that. Even though they did come all the way from the uh, Faber-Castell uh, factory in Germany. So I was really quite shocked when I got the package and it actually had a return shipping label of the Faber-Castell um, manufacturing facility in Germany. So I was a little bit surprised. <laughs> Okay, and you know, at this point, I think uh, I'm going through how I'm going to uh, split those um, silver and gold off of there. But because those colors there, which are your darker colors, your your base colors, your yellow, orange, red, green, blue, black, that sort of thing, um, and the top area is all of your light colors, your pastel colors, and your metallic colors. I decided that it was best to keep the silver and gold in the position that they're in. So the one we're using now is a metallic silver and uh, it lays down really nicely. It, it gives a nice color to a light gray uh, with a light hand. However, if you do push down on it, it does give you that silver color with the uh, metallic reflection. So it does give you that um, dark to light tone depending upon which direction you color. And you'll see that here as I'm coloring in the heavy hand. When I go one way, it looks fairly light. And then when I go the other way, it does darken up quite a bit. So, um, and that's just the, the um, pigmentation. There's a lot of the metallic um, pigment in there that gives it that reflective shine. And like I said, I go one way, it goes lighter. I go the other way and it goes darker. It's really kind of cool. And of course, the next one is going to be that metallic gold. So as you can see here, the light hits it and gives it that really good metallic shine. So even though you're not going to see that on on your pictures a whole lot, you will be able to see it on your page. And this is a fairly nice gold. It's a bit of a brown gold instead of a yellow gold. I prefer yellow golds. So however, you can definitely um, add that yellow underneath the, the gold to give you that yellow gold color. So once again, it is quite reflective and you will see here in just a moment when I hold it up to the light that you can definitely see that metallic shine in it. All right. So here you go, uh, it gives you that, when the light hits it, it gives you that, that reflection, which is really cool. Now we're gonna go into our base colors. So we're gonna start off with yellow and it's a really nice bright yellow. And we're gonna start off with a light hand, of course. And then of course, once we get through the light hand, we'll do a heavier hand. Now it does seem that the sun is coming through and, and hitting it just the right way to make that reflection <laughs> not so fun. Sorry about that. And now we're going to put down our heavy layer and not a scratch in here. I'm not having to push down too hard and you're still getting a very, very deep amount of color coming into that swatch, which is awesome. And there's our yellow. The next one is an orange. It's a very light orange, almost a yellow orange, um, sort of like a carrot orange. It's more, more yellow than red. So, 
it's actually a very pretty color. And when you when you color a lot of carrots and pumpkins and that sort of thing, it is a great color to have available. And now with the heavy hand, it deepens it up quite a bit where you can see a little bit more of that orange color. Um, and you can definitely tell that it's more more of a yellow orange than a red orange. Very nice color, it works quite nicely. And now we've go got a red, and this is definitely a red red. I was a little bit concerned going through the lighter part of the swatch here on whether or not it was going to be a true red or whether it was going to be a bit of an orange red. And on the lighter areas, um, to begin with, when you first put down that first layer, it looks um, like it has a bit more orange in it. But as you build that layer up, it definitely shows as a true red. And then as you get to that really heavy hand, you can definitely see the heavy red, in, the bright red in it, which is great. Absolutely wonderful color gotta have a red. <laughs> I was a little bit surprised that this set doesn't have a white. I do use white to tone down colors. I also use white to blend with when I uh, when I don't mind the colors being toned down a little bit. The next one is a nice bright green. It's almost a um, grass green. They are well centered. I haven't had a single one that was off center. Uh, so they are quite well centered. And we have the train one more time, just, just to say goodnight. <laughs> um, but this is a wonderful uh, light green for grass, for leaves, uh, pretty much anything that you want to use a very nice bright green for. I think it would work really well for, for grass and that sort of thing so of course it's always darker when you put down a heavier hand and you can see more of the more of the green blue color of the green come through when you put down a heavier hand the next one is a tealy kind of color so it's uh, more of an aqua um, deep ocean blue um, and it does work really well underneath the green uh, for your dark green. So if you have a shadow area on a leaf or something and this is the only set you have, uh, this is the color that you would grab for uh, that shadow area. And of course it works really well for your deep uh, aquatic colors, uh, for your shadows and that sort of thing in your ocean type of pictures as well. Nice dark color as you get heavier handed and build that color up. You can definitely see that teal color in there. And of course we will switch over to the other camera where you can see the colors a little bit brighter and a little bit better um, before we uh, start doing other things with them. The next one is a nice light brown. It's, oh no, dark blue. Sorry guys. <laughs> that one is the dark blue. It's uh, almost a cobalt blue and it uh, definitely gives you that that uh, end area for your blue combination between the light, medium, and dark. So you can definitely do a three color combination in the blues. Uh, with this set, which is really cool. A really nice light coat going on there. And then we have our heavy hand, which shows the intensity of the blue and uh, the darkness of it. So it's a really nice dark blue color. And you know, and like I said, it can be used in your shadow areas for your for your sky to deepen your sky a little bit, to deepen your water a little bit. You know, pretty much anything that you would want to use a dark blue for. Uh, the next one is our tan brown, and it's um, almost a sand color, a little bit more sandy color than tan. Um, 
my brain for some reason has decided that I don't know colors anymore, color names anymore. So, <laughs> and of course, I'd probably get it wrong anyway. So I'm not going to put a color to it. Um, in my opinion, I would use this color for sand, for um, with a little bit of black under it for trees and that sort of thing. So it works out quite nicely, and it uh, we'll see later on if it blends, if the colors blend well together, so that we can get those different tones and and that sort of thing, different levels of color. And if we can blend them together to create new colors. Nice light tan color and, and uh, a darker uh, tan brown color. So it works out quite well for sand and dirt. The next one is our medium gray. And it's a bit of a, a warm gray. It's got a little bit of a brown undertone to it. So it would go quite well with the silver and with a bit of black so that uh, you can darken it up and create a darker gray. When I first laid it down, it felt like it was more of a cool gray, but the more layers I get on, the more I can see the brown in it. So it's more of a warm gray. Definitely not as, as warm as a French gray, but a um, bit of a warm gray. All right, and we're almost at the end of the swatch. We've got our black left to go. Just going to get that deep color in there. And as you can see, as I deepen that color and, and put a little bit more pressure on it, the, the deeper the color, the more brown you can see. All right, and then the last one is, of course, our black. And it's a nice light, um, a dark gray color. You can uh, definitely put a nice dark le level of light um, coating to get a nice dark gray underneath a, a lighter gray or over top of a lighter gray to get that deeper gray color. I was a little bit concerned that they were um, the black wasn't as dark as it should be for a black, uh, but definitely as I put down that deeper, um, heavier handed coloring, uh, I was able to build that up into a very black gray, as you can see here, or a black black, I should say, as you can see here. It's more of a uh, of a, a deep black purpley black color, uh, midnight black, I guess you would call it, uh, where there's also um, some other types of black that have a blue undertone to it instead of a purple undertone. And that is the end of our swatch. I should be switching over to the main camera here so that you can see all of the colors together. And as you can see, it's a nice arrangement of light pastel -y colors and a nice arrangement of uh, a rainbow tones of our basic colors of our yellow, orange, red, green, blue, brown, gray, and black. Of course, we've got our silver and our gold and our light tones here with our pinks, purples, and our peachy tones with our light blues and our light green. These two here, which is our red violets, they work really well with this blue violet. And then we've got our pink tones that work really well with our, our other tones. So a really nice assortment of colors. That green, once again, is that nice light uh, minty green, which is awesome. Then we have yellow, orange, red, green, uh, turquoise, blue, brown. And of course, that's a light sandy brown, gray, and black. Now, we're going to do our testing. So I'm just going to grab my circle friend there. And we're going to test these. So we're going to put down our circles for our water test. We're going to use our red, our yellow, and our blue. And we're going to put down our quarter circle there. Okay. 
and we're going to fill that in with our color. I did the whole circle in the color so that uh, if I that way I don't have the bleed of the pen or the uh, rub of the pencil. So, so if I use a pen or a pencil, it's going to bleed if I put water over top of it. Where if I do just the colored pencil, then I know it's just the colored pencil that's running. Alright, so there is our red. And of course, I'm going to take my brush and wipe away any excess, make sure that we don't have anything that's going to get caught up in the watercolor. And then we have our yellow. And again, putting a nice heavy layer down and making sure that it's fully burnished because that's basically what you're going to have at the end of your picture is a fully burnished color. And then we're going to take our blue. Sorry about that. Starting to get the yawns. All right. So just getting that deep color in there, getting it as dark as possible so that uh, we can give an accurate test of when you would put the watercolor on. So if you're putting sparkles or glitter or anything on, you're of course going to do that at the end of your picture so that your hand doesn't rub through it and that sort of thing. So I want to make sure that the color as is, is as is as intense as we could possibly get it. Um, switch you over to the close-up camera so you can see a little bit more accurately. I'm going to grab my water brush if I can find it. And of course it's difficult to find because I never put things away the way they should be. <laughs> or I take them out thinking I need that and then I put it somewhere and can never find it again. So I should be able to find it fairly shortly here. Of course I lose everything so that's the things that happen. Alright, let's see how long it takes me to find this water brush. <laughs> I know I have a couple of different ones and I'm sorting through them, one of which I can't really use because it's actually got a, um, a solution in it for watercolor to help uh, watercolor brushes. Um, like watercolor pens, markers, brush markers, help it blend and move. So I found my water brush. I'm just going to go over it with a nice level of water. And it does move slightly. It's not a huge amount of movement in the red. There is no movement in the yellow. And I'm going to wipe that off and then we'll check on the blue. And there's a slight movement in the blue. It's not a huge amount, but there is a slight movement. So the water test, I think, is a half and half. It's uh, definitely not dissolving like it would uh, if it was a watercolor pencil. However, it does seem to move slightly where uh, with a um, waterproof pencil, it's not going to move at all. So I think we will give it half marks for that uh, when we come through and do our grading. Now I'm going to do the smudge test and I'm going to do the smudge test with a smaller circle just so that uh, we have a little bit more control over what they are and that sort of thing. First we're going to put in our lines for our blending tests. Uh, for the blending pencil as well as the blending marker and of course our gradient and our rainbow blends. But first we're going to do the smudge test. So we're going to put down a smaller circles of the red, yellow and blue starting off with the blue and we will check and see if they will smudge when we rub our hand across them um, because of course that is a problem when we're coloring a picture. Uh, to have something completely colored and looking pretty and you move on to the next thing and end up 
rubbing your hand across what you colored and you look back and it looks a mess because everything has smudged together. Yes, I have had this problem. It is frustrating and annoying. And that's why I do the test. <laughs> so the blue does smudge slightly. It's not a horrible smudge, but there is enough of it there that could cause some issues. Now we're going to do the red. And our red is nice and dark. Fill in all the white spot. Make sure that the page is fully burnished. And then we're going to wipe away the excess and give a rub. And it also uh, moves slightly. It's not as bad as many other pencils I have seen, but however, this is a Faber-Castell set. And even though they are a children's grade set, I would hope that they would carry through with the same um, quality uh, as their highest uh, quality, which is, of course, the uh, poly promos. So the yellow barely moved at all, but it still moved just slightly. Now we're going to try an eraser test and we're going to pull it down to see if it pulls the color with it. And it does pull the color with it and does make a bit of a mess when you color in straight lines across your page or erase, I should say. You can erase it through the center at a certain percentage, but not a, a whole amount. It would take a lot of work to fully erase that. The red also um, moves when you try to erase it. It will drag that color around with it. So of course, be careful while erasing. You can erase the edges and uh, clean those up as well. All right, now for the blue, keep on wiping off my eraser just to make sure that there's no color transference. And again, the blue moves with the eraser. So definitely not something that you want to erase with the Faber-Castell pencil eraser. Uh, it does seem that it will move that pencil a lot more than other pencils that I've used the eraser on. All right, so we're going to also try uh, erasing with our electric pencil uh, eraser, which is the Afmat eraser. As soon as I'm finished fiddling around here. <laughs> and of course, um, I'm going to have to put the eraser in properly on the Afmat, so it will take a couple of seconds here. I'm just trying to make sure that I can get that um, excess rub uh, spreading from the eraser erasing off of the page, which does seem to be coming off quite nicely with just the pencil eraser. However, if we use the electric eraser, we may be able to get all of the excess off as well as some of the center area off that we want to erase away. So as soon as I get all of the pencil eraser together, we'll be able to check that. All right. Oh dear. <laughs> of course, I can't possibly, uh, you know, get my eraser together. I know I have it here somewhere. And I've got to get the eraser part out of its little sleeve thing here so that it's extended. And for some reason, it didn't want to. <laughs> there we go. Aha! We have an eraser. Yay! So let's see how well this erases. So, of course, the best way to erase with one of these erasers is just to do little tiny circles. And it will pick up that color and pull it away quite nicely. However, it does leave little chunks of the eraser. So you have to be careful on how hard you're pressing down. Now let's see if we can erase the rest of the circle. And 
it does erase it a little bit. Like I said, I wasn't using a whole lot of pressure on it or a whole lot of time on it. So it does seem to erase a little bit on the blue, a little bit more on the red. And uh, once again, I'm not spending a lot of time on it. I'm not pushing too hard on it. So I'm just giving it enough time to verify whether or not that eraser will lift that pigment. And it does do so on the red and the blue, but not as much as I would like it to. Uh, so let's see what it'll do on the yellow. Yeah, let's see if we can get at least a good amount removed from the yellow. And of course we're able to erase that um, smudging area from the yellow, but it uh, definitely leaves little, little bits on it, so you have to wipe those away. And it didn't really erase a whole lot on the yellow, so I think the eraser test and the smudge test, it definitely failed. Let's get all these eraser bits off of here. Get that all cleaned up. And now we're going to do, first we're going to just talk about the eraser test and the fact that it did not pass it as well as I thought it would. But, you know, it, with a little bit of work, you could probably completely erase it. It just takes a little more time than I was willing to give it today. Now for our gradient blend, we're going to use the blues. So we're going to start with the light blue, go to the medium blue, and of course the dark blue. And we're going to bring those blues together into a line of gradient color. So definitely start with the light blue. We're just going to build that color up. Make sure that we leave a tail for the next color to blend into. And just build the color up until there's no longer any white spot there and you get a good in-depth bit of color. Alright, now we're going to go on to the medium blue. And we're going to blend that right into the edge, into that area that we left, that little tail area. And we're going to move that color out, giving another bit of a tail for the dark blue to go into. And we've got something on the page there which is causing the blue to separate a little bit. And I think it's something on the page itself. So, Just no matter what I do to go over it, it doesn't seem to darken it up a whole lot in that one area. All right, now we're going to go in with the dark blue, again going into that tail building that color up. So of course it does combine quite nicely and you can definitely layer those colors together building that color up as you go. And it does give you a nice a nice gradient of light, medium, and dark. And of course, when we do our blend a little bit later, we'll see if uh, we can get that to uh, blend out any lines and whatnot with a blending pencil. All right. As you can see, I'm still trying to, to get that one little area to accept color, and it's just not doing it. It's very strange. Okay, so it does do a great, a uh, nice gradient. We're just going to blend in with that light blue, getting all of those edges together. A little bit more of the dark blue, eliminating some of that white spot, and getting that blend all together. And we do have a light, medium, and dark put together in a straight line up of, of gradient color from light to dark. We could have also done from dark to light, um, which probably would have showed a little bit differently. Now we're going to do our rainbow, uh, starting with our yellow. No, starting with our red, sorry. Starting with our red, and of course putting down a good layer of red, 
leaving a tail for that yellow to go into to turn into orange. Make sure that you get all of your white spot covered so that uh, when you lay down the yellow, you're not going to see more yellow than you do orange. Just putting in one or two layers on that light area where we're going to blend that into it. Now our yellow, blend it right into that red, creating that orange. And this pencil does work better if you build those layers up by putting one layer down, putting down in the next layer, then going over it with your previous layer and then going on to it again with the layer that you're, you're laying down so that you can build that color up and show that it's a true color there. I'm just going to go over it with the red, just intensifying that orange. All right. So we definitely did get a red, a yellow, and an orange there. And blend it all together. Now we're going to go from our yellow into our blue, creating a green. Just going to make sure that we get a good level of that yellow on there. So once we go into the yellow with the blue, we'll get a nice green. And again, this is a building uh, block type of a type of pencil. So adding layer upon layer of color will give you a, a more intense color. The more yellow you add, the lighter the green. The more blue you add, the darker the green. So you definitely can blend these together to create a new color, uh, whether it be yellow into blue to create green, or yellow into red to create orange, or blue into red to create purple, that sort of thing. And of course, orange into purple to make brown, and so on, and so on, and so on. <laughs> So it did definitely do the gradient uh, movement in a rainbow effect of red to orange, orange to yellow, yellow to green, green to blue. So we can definitely say that it has passed the uh, layering and blending test here. And I think I'm going to maybe zoom it out and show you how that looks. Eh, maybe not. <laughs> so yeah there we go so there we are with our gradients um, both the light to dark where you can see that movement of color from our light to the darkest and then of course in our rainbow where you can see the red the orange yellow green and blue and you can see that rainbow color did really quite well um, like I said, it definitely requires a little bit of building uh, between the yellow and the, the blue to get the green and between the the red and the yellow to get the um, to get the orange. All right, so we're going to use the deep purple here and we're going to uh, test our blender pencils as well as our blender pen. Uh, I've got the finesse blender pen, which is created to blend uh, wax based colored pencils and uh, may be um, usable with these if it is a wax base. Sometimes with an oil based pencil it won't blend it very well. It'll move it around a little bit but it won't actually blend it a whole whole lot. So um, just as another thing that we will do as well with the uh, blender pencil is uh, see if we can blend the lines out of our gradient and uh, blur those lines a little bit better. So I'm just getting a good layer, a good amount of purple on here, leaving some of the white spot to see if we can get the blender pencil to move it around. And so the first one we're going to use here is the Karen Dash um, Bright Stick. Um, there it is. Of course, I have it in my Derwent uh, pencil extender. 
and we're just going to do it here at the very top. I'm just going to do um, one layer and what we'll do is we'll do different layers all the way down the block to see which blender pencil works better on it. Now the Caran Dash doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, it lifts up a lot of the pencil, but it doesn't really blend those color that color into all of those um, white areas. It just seems to lift it up a little bit. Switch you over to the close-up camera so you can see a little bit better of what I'm talking about here. The next one is, of course, the um, the the Lyra blender and this is the Splendor Blender and it does seem to do a lot better. Uh, it does move the pigment around to uh, fill in those holes which is great. This one here is the Blick Studio Blender and it also does okay. Um, it seems to scrape off quite a bit of the color though which is definitely not what you want to happen. So it does remove quite a bit of color. The Caran Dash seems to just mash it around and, and ch uh, clump it up. It doesn't really seem to fill in any of the white spot. So I think the Lara, the Lyra uh, or Lara, however you want to say it, I think the Lara Blender is basically um, the best one to use on these pencils. Another good one will probably be the Derwent, which I couldn't find at the time of the video. Um, <laughs> so the Derwent blender is built to blend an oil-based pencil, so it would probably work really well with this as well. So as you can see, I'm going over it again with the purple, and uh, it does seem to be picking up more of the pigment on the uh, Karen Dash blend as well as the Blick. However, it's not adding any extra ca color to the Lyra or Lyra or however you want to say it. <laughs> I can never get names of pencils right. Sorry guys. Uh, so, But you can definitely see that there is a buildup uh, continuing on those other two areas but the center area doesn't have any more color building up on it. So uh, definitely one of those things that you have to remember if you're if you're wanting to add more color is the Lyra blender does not uh, seem to build any color after it's blended where you can build more color with the other two so interesting information there all right so we're going to put down a layer here for our uh, finesse blender and we're going to try to blend the, the pencil with the Finesse Blender. Once again, the Finesse Blender was created for the um, wax-based pencils and is not great for oil-based pencils. So when we go through and try that, we'll see if it's a wax-based or an oil-based. So as you can see, I've labeled them uh, for the Caran Dash, the Lara, and the Blick so that you can see the different blends from each blender pencil. I think that the Caran Dash and the Blick definitely aren't the best ones for it. However, the Lara does do a good job in filling in the white spot. Again, I think the Derwent blender pencil might be a better option uh, depending upon whether or not these are an oil base or a wax base and of course the information on the tin does not say anything about it so um, just putting down another block of the purple and we're going to use like I said the finesse blender pen and uh, we'll see if this is an oil base or a uh, wax based pencil Okay, I'm going to grab that finesse blender and wipe it all clean because I do use it. And I'm just going to try to move it around. And it doesn't move it at all. Not even a little bit. <laughs> Not even if I scrub it and rub it around. It just doesn't, it doesn't move it. So definitely an oil-based pencil. Uh, it doesn't even move it off of the edge, so... 
Um, yeah, it doesn't even pick it up onto the blender pen. <laughs> so definitely would say that it's an oil-based pencil and uh, not something that you could use your finesse blender pen for. I'm going to try the bullet nib just to make sure that it's, uh, you know, not the fact that the other end is used up or too dry or something. And yeah, no, it's just not moving. <laughs> it's not even coming off onto the blender pen. So definitely not something that you can blend with the finesse blender pen. And again, like I said, it is created for a uh, wax-based colored pencil, not an oil-based color pencil. And a lot of the Faber-Castell products are an oil base, so I assumed it was, but I wanted to make sure. All right, so let's let's do um, a little bit of blending, I think, with the gradient here and get that all cleaned up so that uh, all of the extra lines are removed and all the white spot is covered up. I am using the Lara um, blender here so that uh, we can get those lines blurred a little bit. Of course, if this set had a white, I would probably have done it with the white, but it doesn't have a white, so I did not. All right, so it does blend quite nicely with that Lara though. It does remove that, that hard line. However, there's something on the page which is causing a void, but there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> and blending that line as well. So yeah, it does pretty good for the blending of the gradient color. And we'll blend it the opposite direction just to get all of that white spot filled in. Sometimes if you have little bits of lines going in the opposite direction with your blender, does fill in those lines and remove that, uh, that lineage from the page. So Now of course this is printed on the 67 Nina cardstock. So it is a fairly smooth paper. So I feel that it does blend well and gradiate very, very nicely from light, medium to dark. So it does pass that test. It did make the a rainbow gradient, so it does pass that test. Uh, it did pass the blender with the Lyra. However, it doesn't pass the, um, the, Finesse Blender. It also didn't pass the water test. I think with the water test it's kind of hard because I think the water test is, I think uh, it didn't do a horrible, a horrible amount on the water test. So I think what I'll do is I'll just do the water test at half points. Not completely failed, but didn't, didn't definitely pass. So we'll just do a half point on that. <laughs> It did fail on the smudge test and it did fail on the erase test. So definitely left smudges and definitely wasn't easy to erase. All right. And once again, I do believe it passed on the blend tests. So we've got half a mark there, failed there. And of course, failed on our race test as well. So definitely failed there. Uh, we've got our blend test, which both passed. We've got our blue, our blue gradient and our rainbow. Um, it failed on the Caran d'Ache, passed on the Lyra and failed on the Blick. And of course, absolutely failed on the uh, Finesse Blender as well. And I don't know why I'm going on. <laughs> I'm going on about something, but I don't know what. All right. And that is, I think, the conclusion of our uh, testing. I'm going to 
switch you on over to the uh, uh, distance camera here, I do believe, so we can take a look at those test results. Um, we're going to name it with a nice bl green glitter, of course, because it's got a nice sparkle. So these are colored pencils, and they are the Faber-Castell Sparkle. Wonderful, wonderful, feel good pencils. They they make you feel good. All right, so there is our swatching and our testing all done, and we're gonna take a look at the test results and swatch, maybe, or are we just gonna play with the pencils? I think we're oh we're going to play with the pencils. So we are actually going to color something with the pencils. So we're going to color the uh, main page here, the uh, name page, because it's got some really, really cute little pictures on it. And it's small enough that we should be able to color it fairly quickly. So. I think at this point, uh, we're going to color the, oh, we're going to play with the sharpener. So we need to sharpen those pencils that we used for our um, testing. So we're going to test the sharpener now. And it seems to work quite well for the yellow. And of course, I'm not in screen to show you that properly, so I apologize. <laughs> I do believe that I broke um, a tip with the red. So, yeah, I broke the tip with the red, and I will be sharpening that with a crank. And, of course, here we have our blue, and it did okay as well. So, I will probably prefer to use the crank sharpener on these pencils, just because I, I just can't use hand sharpeners. I'm terrible with them. But it's a cute little sharpener, and it does actually do quite well. Um, with the with normal use, but unfortunately, I just don't I can't use them very well. So we're going to start with our yellow, and in the little lights in the Ferris wheel, in our London scene here. And of course, it's raining, so we're going to do a nice dark background. And then we're going to use our gray in our cloud. And, of course, put in a little bit of a silver lining. Where's the silver? There we go. Very, very cute little pictures. I'm just going to move you in so you can see a little better, and then I'll... I'll uh, readjust the focus on it so that it doesn't look so blurry. All right. So I hope that you have all been enjoying the video. Uh, there we go. That's a nice clear video. Uh, and of course, uh, tomorrow is our Saturday color and chat. So we will be going through uh, tomorrow with uh, picking out a new page and all that fun stuff. So I'm using the silver at this point to do the uh, Ferris wheel bars and all of those different things where we wanted that lighter gray in, but not too much of that light gray. Not too much of the, of the gray, so. Of course, we've got the London Bridge and the ferris wheel and the boardwalk so we're going to take the black and we're going to do all of our shadowy areas the black areas that i want to still have the definition i'm just going to do in a light coat to give it that dark gray look and then once my hands out of the way 
This has got to be annoying to y'all. <laughs> These little tiny pictures, unfortunately, that's the, that's the problem with coloring. Little tiny pictures is your hand ends up being in the way all the time. So now I've got the black down there and I'm going to take that tan and I'm going to combine the tan with the black to give it a nice dark brown for that uh, boardwalk. All right, now we're going to do the water from the under the bridge there and under the boardwalk. So I'm using that teal color, using that dark teal. And then I'll come in with a little bit lighter as well as some blue creating that that water tone so we're going through with the lighter blue and then we're going to go through with a little bit more of that teal under here just building that color up And then, let's see, what's the next color we use? A little bit of that gray up in the sky because it is raining. So, of course, in London, it rains just about as much as it does here in Oregon. So, we're used to the color of a gray sky. <laughs> All right. And then, of course, we're going to color our raindrops, nice blue. Put in a little bit of blue in this water to deepen certain areas there. All right, and of course, we're going to do the tunnel with some black. And we're going to do that a little bit darker just to fill in that tunnel. There we go. And there we have our first picture. Now we're going to do the Eiffel Tower and I've got some silver. Of course, the Eiffel Tower is one giant metal tower. So we're just going to do the whole thing in silver. Like I said, it's a very, very tiny little picture, so getting deep into the details of it is a little bit more difficult. So there we have the Eiffel Tower all done, and now we're going to do some trees. So I've got that light green. And we're just going to fill in the little grassy tree leafy tree things. I'm not quite sure if they're trees or I'm not sure what they are, but I'm coloring them as trees. Then I've got the little bit of teal going over that yellow, adding that darker color to make that darker green for the leaf shadow areas. And then I'm going to use the red on the heart as well as the little things here. And we're going to use some gray on the cloud. And then some blue for the sky. Of course, we're going to put a little bit of silver lining into that cloud. And we're going to put some blue in there for a nice summertime sky. Because, you know, the best place, best time to go to Paris is when the love is in the air and the spring is blooming. And, well, in Paris, the love is always in the air. <laughs> Who are we kidding? <laughs> uh, so it's uh, definitely best to go when it's a nice sunny day, though. See all the light reflecting off of the Eiffel Tower. All right. And that's our, our lightest blue. Now, 
We're going to go in with some darker blue for the edges here and to darken up some of that skyline. Make it all nice and pretty. Just feathering it out into the lighter blue. And just getting that little bit of blend going on there. Now we're going to do the little forest. So we're going to, of course, be using the light green. And of course, I don't have a lot of green. So to do the forest with the, the tree in the back there with the uh, snow on the tree, uh, we definitely have different uh, different techniques that we're going to have to use to to put in those darker greens and make everything look a little bit different. So I've got the light green down and now I'm going to bring in that teal green and I'm just going to fill in little areas or most areas over top of the yellow green on this tree. Lightening it up in certain areas, darkening it in certain areas and then of course blending that all together to get that really dark piney color. That lovely evergreen color that we're all looking looking at and thinking, ooh, that's pretty. All right. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of blue into those really dark areas where the pine needles are showing through. And on our little bit of our edges where the shadows are the deepest. And the blue will make sense in a moment, <laughs> I promise. Just going to deepen up some of these dark greener areas with the, with the blue. And of course, once we go over it with the lighter green, it will be a darker green. So uh, definitely... There's a reason, I promise. <laughs> There's a method to my madness somewhere. So just getting those blues and greens all combined to get that nice dark evergreen kind of look. Just going to go over it with a little bit of yellow uh, on those blues just to give that blue an extra kick into the green level. All right, and then we're going to go into the one with the, the snow on the top there. So we're just going to put in a teal shadowing and then we're going to just take our regular light green and blend it all together. It's such a small area. We really don't want to do much more than that. And then we're just going to take our gray and we're just going to give it a little bit of shadow in the snow like that. And then on the last tree, we're going to take our, our dark green and we're just going to put in some of those extra dark areas close to the trunk of the tree. And then we're going to take our yellow or our, our tan brown, sorry, not our yellow, our brown, and we're going to put in the branches of the tree as well as do the trunks of the other trees. And then we're going to take our, I think our blue, and we're just going to fill in the sky areas, doing it a little bit darker than the um, summery type of sky for the pair shot. And these all look like pictures from the camera hanging on a. Um, in a, in a dark room exposure line, waiting for them to finish exposing. If you've ever uh, seen an old camera or an old picture being exposed, that's basically what they do is they go into a room with a bright red light and make everything dark. And get the pictures onto paper. My mom used to have a dark room. 
at least dark room equipment. Can't remember if she actually had the dark room. All right. Oh, missed a spot. Get my light green, mint green color just to fill in. Uh, basically, I took the the blue and I brought it down to the edge of the trees there, and then I put in that that light blue, light green, that minty green color, as underbrush or under uh, coloring there, so that uh, we could blend that into the blue and not just have blue all the way down to the ground. I'm just going to blend that all together with the teal, putting the teal in for our shadow areas. There we go. And there is our little forest picture. Now we've got this little city picture and it's a night scene. So let's make it glow a little bit. I think we're going to use some different colors here because I want to try to use as much of the um, box as possible, if not all of it. So this one we're going to do in a nice orange. And then the next one I think we're going to do in pink. Nice hot pink color. Oh, no, I think this is the bubble gum. And of course, I will go over the windows and the doors with a nice bright yellow. Because it's a night scene, so you want all those windows and doors glowing. It does look like there's a bit of a canal there, so we'll be doing some water color, uh, water colors as well. Now this one, we've got our nice uh, medium purple. Just filling that all in. Once again, um, I will say that the about this picture is that these little tiny paintings are very, very tiny. So getting everything in all the lines and everything else can be quite difficult. So if you go over the lines while you're coloring it in, don't worry about it. Uh, it is definitely something that happens. So I'm going through with the orange uh, so that uh, we get a little bit of a red glow in the light from the entrances and exits and windows and all that fun stuff. Now we're going to take our blue green and we're going to do the waves of the water. So this is our dark aquatic color and we're just going to fill that in and we're going to do the base area at the edge of the street going into the water. And then we're just going to take our light blue and we're just going to fill that all in. And get that all filled in. Blending it into that blue green color. The pictures in this book, they're, they're really, really sweet. Um, the little tiny pictures are fantastic um, for doing things like this, where, where you have like 20 minutes to an hour to color. Sorry about that. So where you have 20 or 30 minutes to color, so you can just color a really small area and uh, still have a really good um, relaxation period. So we're going to color this black even though there's a little birdie up here. So we're going to ignore the little birdie. We're going to do the, the little cloud in gray and then we're going to do the night sky in black. Making sure that we go around the buildings very lightly um, with a gray so that we can get uh, that night sky feeling. I'm just going to do the edge of the cloud here with a little bit of yellow because of the moon hitting it. And we're going to do the edges here black. And I'm going to go right over top of that little birdie because, you know, I just can't think of any reason for it to be there. <laughs> Maybe it's a, a bat in the background, I don't know. But as you can see, I'm not going completely up to the uh, very, very top of the building or the very edges of the buildings. I'm leaving a little bit of space there so that when we go over that, 
with the gray, um, it lightens it up a little bit so that it has a bit of a glow. Same with around the moon and around the stars. Just lightening my hand as I get closer to them so that when I go over them with a the gray, um, you can definitely see that they're a little bit lighter in that area and a little bit brighter. So, Of course, around the, the moon and the stars, I will be putting a little bit of yellow as well. So it will definitely show a, a brighter area. And once again, just lightening my hand as I get closer to the to the buildings, um, leaving just a slight gap there so that it is the lightest in that area. So that it gives that, that illusion of a uh, light glow from the building's lights. Very, very cute picture. Now, tomorrow, um, we will be going through and um, picking out a new picture, as well as a new set of pencils to be using for our pencil of the week. Um, I did go through and finish the picture from the last week's coloring of the week. I will, of course, on uh, tomorrow's video go through and show you how to do the, the glowing white flowers, but we'll, we'll take a look at that tomorrow. All right, so we're just going to fill in any white spot that we've got going here, and of course, as you can see, we've gone over the moon with the yellow and added that yellow to the uh, darker edges around the in the night sky there. So we've got that little bit of darkness in the in the sky, but have that yellow show through. All right, now I'm being picky. <laughs> so there is our little town, and I'm just going to make sure I clean everything up, make sure it's all nice and bright and shiny. I didn't like the amount of light that was coming through those windows, so I'm just going to darken it up a little. All right. Now, the last but not the least scene whatsoever is, of course, the beach scene. And we are going to color the beach scene. And we're going to add the red violet colors here to the umbrella, starting with the dark red violet on the edges. And then we'll be using that light red violet for the rest of it there making it a lovely pinky violet color. Really, really pretty color. And then we've got our umbrella stick to do. So we've got a nice silver for that. So pretty much every color in this entire set has been used, uh, which is wonderful. We're going to go over these little hearts with some red. There we go. And of course, we're going to do the sunshine, make it all shiny with some yellow. And then we'll get add a little bit of orange and a little bit of red just at the very edge there, just to give it that, that heated glow doing a little bit into the tines, but just taking that yellow and extending it out to the edge of the tines, the ed edge of the light flares there around the sun, making everything nice and bright and glowy. Now for the water, we're going to just do some aqua colors. Oh, let's do the sand first. So we've got that tan, sand tan brown color. And we're just going to do the sand, of course, in the deep, darkest areas. I'm just going to press a little bit harder, getting that deeper sand tone. 
and then we have our water which I'm going to use this uh, aqua color everywhere and I'll go through and add another uh, add other colors to the waves and the movement of the water like so and then we're going to take some blue and deepen some of those some of those wave colors up a little bit make it all pretty and then once again we're going to do our cloud with some gray and a nice light summer sky now we're using the medium blue for this getting it all midday type of sky nice and blue around all those hearts and the wonderful little umbrella and making it quite pretty so that is our lovely little beach scene and we're going to do the frame in our hot pink because why not like I said I want to use every color in the set and uh, I think this you know I've got a couple more colors to use and, and I think I've colored with every single color in the set so this part here we're just doing uh, with the hot pink around the edges and the shadow areas there's a bit of a curve to the picture here so we're just going to make sure that those curves are showing a little bit of darkness underneath the clip and then we're going to put in the light pink so this is the bubblegum pink and blending it into that hot pink color looks a little fluorescent on this camera but it is more of a bubblegum and a hot pink color as you will see on the other camera and there we have our little frame for that one and what are we going to do next I think we're going to do our little leaves maybe I think I'm just going through check and see what <laughs> what colors I have left to do uh, to use so I'm not quite sure what to um, hmm. hopefully I haven't frozen the screen uh, nope there we go I was working on the airplane out of sight so I have put some gray silver gray down on the airplane and now I'm going over it with that peach color uh, just to give it that um, parchment paper kind of look the gray gives it that shadow and the peachy tone gives it that nice parchment light parchment kind of look so we've got our airplane all done and I think that is pretty close to every single color in the set being used um, I think I have the gold left and that's about it so yeah 20 colors and uh, we were able to complete the majority of this page uh, I'm going to take some green and do up the little leaves here and we'll get those all cleaned up and finished up of course I'm not watching at this point so I keep on forgetting to move the camera so you can see what I'm doing how rude <laughs> I do apologize I didn't realize I was off screen here so I'm just gonna move the book a little bit uh, no nope, didn't move it enough guy <laughs> I am so sorry guys I did not realize that I was this far off screen with the uh, the coloring so right now I'm just coloring those a uh, little bit of black on those little clamps that are holding the pictures up and I didn't realize I was so far out of uh, out of shot 
Hopefully I move it down a little bit, which it doesn't seem like I'm going to do. Now I'm going over them with some silver and getting them all filled in. I have to be more careful. Make sure that I'm in screen. I am so very sorry. I didn't realize I was so far off screen. For some reason I thought I was dead center of the screen. I don't know what uh, what I was thinking. Sorry about that. So you get a lovely view of my hand. Isn't that nice? You get a close-up of all the little sparkles on the pencils. It's wonderful. So now we're going to fill in the hearts uh, with the red. Make that all pretty there. And there's another heart exactly the same on the other side. I'm going to fill that in as well. And maybe I'll clue in and figure out that I'm out of screen. I don't know if I will. It has been, um, you know, almost two hours at this point. So, <laughs> all right. So I'm just filling in all of the curly cues with some green, doing the little leaves and all of the little vines and getting those all filled in just like this. And of course, I went out of the lines. And finishing off that curly cue here. And making sure that it's all finished off there. Adding a little bit of dark green to it as well. Getting some of that dimension and depth going in there. All right. So looking very good, looking very good, almost completed. And of course we're doing the same on the other side, but of course I didn't look up long enough to tell that I was off screen. I am so sorry. <sighs> Silly me. So now I'm going to use the gold for the edges of the swoosh from the airplane uh, as the uh, airplane flows down at the bottom here there's a bit of a swoosh which I'm going to be coloring with that gold co that I'm coloring with that gold color which will give a little bit of a metallic shine to it um, reflecting that 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 area is moving and once again didn't look up from the uh, out, look up at the camera to make sure that that was actually in screen. Again, I apologize. Hi, I've got to keep a better eye on that. I think I think I got to make sure that I'm not zoomed in as close uh, when I'm doing really really tiny things. All right, so we're going to do the wire uh, above the. Um, pictures here soon. I'm just filling in, making sure that all the edges are cleaned up and got some sort of color on them. So I'm doing a nice light blue with it on those edges where the water is. All right. And then we're going to do a nice blue line and we're just going to follow that line all the way around, filling it in, and completing the page. All right, so as soon as I'm done the line, once we get this all filled in, of course we will go to the main camera so you can see the full picture. And of course um, at that point uh, we will going through all of the wonderful things that are going to be happening tomorrow, what I feel about the pencils, how I feel about the book, and all that fun stuff. And once again, I apologize. I'm not uh, very good at keeping it in the uh, camera view, obviously. We did use all 20 pencils on this wonderful picture, and as you see, can see, it turned out quite nicely. Um, the paper in this book is absolutely wonderful. It accepted the pencils really, really well. Uh, it is called Europa by Rita Berman. 
and it will be uh, one of those uh, authors or artists that will be uh, featured on the channel at some point this year. Absolutely gorgeous book and of course the picture turned out very very nicely with 20 little pencils that sparkle. Um, the sparkle pencils are lovely. Uh, they are definitely a Faber-Castell grade or quality um, product. Uh, they are an a student grade product where um, it is made and created for children. I just find that they are a feel-good product. They make me feel good. Um, pretty things make me feel good and the sparkles on these are just so fun and they make me feel really good. And once again, I appreciate these beautiful gifts from uh, the two wonderful people that sent them. Again, I say thank you very, very much. I appreciate you, uh, each and every one of you. Of course, this is a voiceover of the original uh, video. So if you have seen the original video, as you can probably tell, um, I didn't keep up to the original video at all um, at, because I just can't. Uh, I don't remember half of what I say sometimes and, and it never comes out the exact same way no matter how you want to word it unless you're reading it from a script. So I don't read from scripts too often uh, when it comes to my videos and uh, that sort of thing. So it's really difficult to, to put the exact same words to everything. Okay, so as we put these away, of course, I want to remind you all to, of course, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, ring the bell, uh, you know, um, if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I do put out a video every day and am live on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Of course, tomorrow is Saturday, so we are going to do Start Over Saturday, uh, which will, um, of course, be picking a new picture as well as picking a new set of pencils. And uh, yeah, my first impressions of the pencils is they're fantastic. My first impressions of the book is it's a gorgeous book and fantastic paper. Of course, uh, finally, and last but not least, of course, is to uh, remember to always relax, color, and stay safe, everyone. Uh, again, I want to say thank you very much to my subscribers and to my members uh, who have joined me in this wonderful, magical, um, wonderful, magical story, whatever you want to call it, uh, adventure that we are all on. Until next time, always and once again, always remember to relax, color, and stay safe, everyone. Until then, and until tomorrow, bye-bye for now.